G'day, guys and gal. Everyone likes custodians. No exceptions. Bitch, me to kill. I said no exceptions. Their armor is cool, their attitude is badass, and their skills are legendary. Not a single custodian has ever fallen to chaos, and in recent lore, they're finally getting the love and the respect they deserve. You hear that guy, Haley? No more custodians getting one-shot by Harlequins these days. There is one custodian that stands above the rest, a warrior so skilled and powerful that he was considered a Primarch in all but name. Plus, his name is criminally badass. Cosentine Valdor. Like, bro, what kind of name is that? That's awesome. With a huge recent reveal of Valdor in the lore, as well as him getting some time in the sun during the Horus Heresy, I thought now was as good a time as any to chat about the Banana King. So yeah, like, obvious spoiler warning, but every lore video is full of spoilers, so get over it. Let's get into it. The Emperor had a hard-on for Valdor when Valdor was just a young boy. <clears throat> Sorry, the Emperor was hell-bent on finding and turning Valdor into a custodian from day one. As the wars of unification rang out across Terra, the Emperor upheaved continents and moved entire armies across the world just to find Kozzi. Yes, I'm going to call him Kozzi because that's what he'd be called if he was in Australia. This lends a whole bunch of weight to the argument that Kozzi wasn't amazing because the Emperor wanked extra hard onto him, but because he himself was a legend regardless of if he was a custodian or not. The effort required to snag up this boy was not wasted. Kozzi would turn out to be a master assassin, a master warrior, a master diplomat, a master commander, and a master beta. He was literally the best at everything, but he did it all in a very straightforward way. For example, when he was sent to kill a bitch who stole some water, he was able to sneak past her army despite being in full golden plate. He then had a polite discussion with the bitch, telling her his name and informing her that he would pass on any last words she had to the emperor. When she threatened to scream and sound the alarm, he calmly told her that that would just result in the death of her army as well as her. A great example of him being a master diplomat was when another bitch was going to betray the Emperor and use some Thunder Warriors to arrest Kozzi. Now Kozzi knew she was a traitor, and he knew that he would have no issue massacring the Thunder Warriors and her in a single stroke if he had to, but instead he took the time and effort to chat to her and basically convince her not to be a traitor. When she accepted this, he let her live and no one died. To show off how monstrous he was in combat, the Emperor made him a special spear, which was actually designed to nerf him. He was literally unbeatable and could cut through armies like a whippersnipper cutting through grass. It got to a point that the Emperor was worried that Valdor was losing what little humanity he had left, hence the spear he gave to Valdor showed Valdor the soul of each person he killed as he killed them. He wanted to maintain Valdor's empathy and to stop him from becoming an automaton. You would think that learning the life story of everyone you killed would get a bit too heavy, but Valdor Valdor pretty much never let go of the spear, and he accepted the burden that the Emperor had put upon him. Valdor does a bunch of other crazy OP shit that we will get to. I want to keep this video somewhat chronological, even though it's less a direct lore retelling, and more so a deep dive into Valdor's character whilst using the lore as examples. Does that make sense? It doesn't to me. Let's continue. Now it's not entirely clear how the Emperor wanted to shape Kozzi. He made Kozzi a slave to his will and a tool for his use, which eroded most of Valdor's humanity but he didn't want just an effective robot either. Whilst Valdor was totally cool with just being the Emperor's bitch, even admitting he knew he had no true free will and that the Emperor had taken everything for him, the Emperor seemingly became less cool with it. It's almost like the Emperor realized that the path he had set down for humanity was full of sacrifice and all-round shittiness, so he did what he could to try and save a few souls along the way. The Unification Wars began to wrap up, because, you know, mutants cosplaying as characters from Mad Max don't tend to fare too well against people like Kozzi, and Kozzi is then told to cull the Thunder Warriors. The reason for the culling was that the Thunder Warriors were crudely made and had anger management problems as well as raging cancer. If you're gonna save mankind and be seen as the heroes, it's best not to have all your warriors look like a bunch of Batman villains. Hence, the Thunder Warriors were rounded up and mowed down by Valdor and the other custodians without too much effort. One Legion of Thunder Warriors were able to escape the slaughter, and they led a counterattack against the Imperial Palace as a bit of a fuck you. Totally fair enough in my opinion. As the Thunder Warriors charge, the first Space Marines to be made fought them and were dominating them. When the leader of the Thunder Warriors fought Valdor, he was quickly curb stomped and got murdered pretty hard. Adios Thunder Warriors. Now whilst this had been going on, the Emperor had begun to work on the Primarchs and Valdor wasn't a fan. 
The Primarchs were the first things the Emperor had created that were entirely unpredictable. Now, being unpredictable is different from lacking free will. The Thunder Warriors had plenty of free will, but were predictably put down without much effort after fulfilling the roles they were predicted to do. The Primarchs, however, were a massive wild card, and whilst Valdor was like, bruh, he didn't push the issue much and he trusted the Emperor's judgement. Whoops. The Primarchs are scattered, and the Great Crusade begins. Now, during the start of the Crusade, the Emperor was very active in purging, and Valdor fought by his side. They delivered unbelievable amounts of ass kicking to anyone that didn't immediately drop to their knees or bend over. Cosy doesn't have a whole lot of deep lore around this point, as the attention went more towards finding the Primarchs and their own little quests, and less about how hard the Emperor and the Custodes were skull fucking orcs to death. This combined with the fact that Kazi is not a super opinionated or talkative guy meant that even during the Council of Nikia, which was a little gathering the Emperor put together to decide whether or not it was okay for humans to shoot lightning out of their cocks, he favoured neither side and he just kind of watched. As a fun little side note here, it's rumoured that during sparring matches, Valdor was able to beat numerous Primarchs and he even beat Horus. It really came down to a skill versus power thing. Valdor was more skilled than most of the Primarchs and he was significantly older than all of them, but their raw strength and bullshit OP Primarch hacks were greater than Valdor's. When the Emperor decided it was time to finally paint his fuck huge backlog of minis, he went back to Terra and he took Kozzi and his custodies with him. As we know, this didn't pan out so well, as Horus was turning into a dickhead and fell to chaos. Magnus, trying to be a good guy in the wrong way, psychically projected himself to the Emperor, knocking off a huge bottle of Nuln oil in the process and ruining the Emperor's minis. This caused the Emperor to rage and send Valdor as well as Lehman to go bring Magnus back home for a huge spanking. Now Valdor was a good call to send, Lehman was not, hence when they arrived at Prospero to grab Magnus, Lehman instead attacked the planet with the intention of killing Magnus. Valdor was like, what the fuck bro, relax. But then he saw the Thousand Sons had continued to use warp spaghetti in violation of the Emperor's edict, hence he happily joined the slaughter. On the battlefield, Valdor was a genuine beast. His highlight being him taking on 30 elite Thousand Sun warriors who were able to see the future, hence predict all of Valdor's attacks. Well, just because you can see something coming, doesn't mean you can stop it. If Stephen Hawking predicted that in 30 seconds, the rock would body slam him, he's got 30 seconds to say goodbye. Valdor tore through all 30 of these warriors, and he only suffered a single wound, which he just kind of copped and then continued killing. With Prospero destroyed, Kozu would come home and immediately be required to deploy the Custodes to the now fucked up human webway in order to hold back the tide of demons. To make matters even more worse, Horus revealed his betrayal and all but wiped out the Salamanders, Raven Guard, and Iron Hands. The Custodes and Valdor weren't able to go out and deal with Horus as their full attention was now on trying to clear out the webway. With the Horus Heresy in full swing, Valdor took up a position on the Imperial War Council and helped dictate and direct the Loyalist armies, whilst the Emperor was busy playing Paradox Billiard's Vostrian Roulette 4th Dimensional Hypercube Chess Strip Poker against Titsnitch. It was Valdor who put together the team of elite assassins and sent them to kill Horus. Dawn wasn't a fan of this because he's all about building and honor and shit, whilst Valdor is all about getting shit done. The assassination failed and no more was sent out. When the Siege of Terror occurred, Valdor once again made the traitor Astartes his bitch. He raw doggied them time and time again, reliving the lives of countless traitors and even demons. Time and time again his mind and soul were exposed to the pure corruption of chaos with every kill he made, yet he didn't even flinch or bulk. Despite putting in a fat shift, he could not prevent Horus from turning the Emperor into a vegetable, even though Horus was killed as a result and the traitors had lost. Now pretty much everyone felt despair when the Emperor was kinda killed. The Custodes entered into a deep depression and refused to leave the palace. The Primarch's daddy issues got turned up to 11, with the lion even stabbing Lehman in the chest with his sword. You would think that Valdor, the Emperor's greatest servant other than Malkador, would be completely shattered and heartbroken, but he was actually the one that encouraged the Primarchs to dust themselves off. He told Lehman that there was still light and glory ahead for mankind, and not to give up hope. Valdor and Lehman had a special bro code, which was symbolized by both of them being given matching spears by the Emperor. Whilst Valdor never put his down, Lehman refused to pick his up. It was pretty cute, you know. Soon after this, Valdor left into exile to pursue the unknown. Until recently, he's back, baby, and by God, he hasn't been idle. Basically, in the latest Eisenhorn book, the identity of the King in Yellow was revealed to be Kozzi. The King was a mysterious dude who seemed to be at odds with the protagonist, but it turns out it was just Kozzi trying to single-handedly carry the Imperium. 
He's found himself a pocket dimension in which he is making a fuck off huge army of blank clones, good guy demons, and some kind of variant of Space Marine. It's all a bit vague, but general theme is that he's preparing for something big. The characters theorize that he's trying to discover the true name of the Emperor, which obviously has set off some alarm bells. There's a theory that the Emperor's true name, in combination with the Tree of Life, could be enough to get the Emperor's bony ass off the Golden Throne. Considering Valdor and Rus are two sides of the same coin, have matching spears, and are both seemingly trying to resurrect the Emperor, this actually makes a lot of sense. Until Kazi explains a bit more though, it definitely comes off as a bit heretical. In saying that though, Kazi has always been a super practical guy. If an army of blanks, mutated space marines, and friendly demons is the best way to go about something, you bet your ass Valdor is going to use them. Or maybe I'm just completely wrong and the Banana King is sick of everyone's shit and wants to genocide the galaxy. Either way, I'm on his side. And that does us for today guys, the lore and story of Cosentine Valdor. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more golden content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.